Alice was very tired of being bullied in school. She knew the teachers knew she was being bullied, but they didn't care. She told her dad, but he just said ignore them. She knew she couldn't ignore them. How could she? She used to cry herself to sleep every night praying and wishing and hoping they would just leave her alone. One day she went for a walk in the woods to try to forget about everything that was happening. She got a fright when she happened to walk right into her bullies. They started mocking her and one of the girls hit Alice and she fell down and hit a rock. She had hit her elbow and there was blood on the rock. That weekend Alice's dad bought her a pet rabbit to cheer her up. Alice was delighted to have a pet rabbit and called it White Rabbit. The next day she had realized the rabbit escaped. She ran out of the house and saw the rabbit outside her door as if waiting for her. She said, White Rabbit don't run away like that giving me a fright. The rabbit started running into the woods and Alice found it hard to keep up. She had realized the rabbit stopped by the rock where her blood was on. Alice found it spooky. Why would the rabbit run to that rock? She picked up her rabbit and brought him home. That Monday it was like magic. Her bullies weren't bullying her and they spoke to her like she was always their friend. After school Alice invited them to see a cool tree in the woods that they could climb. When they got into the woods and reached the tree, before they could step another step closer, they all screamed as they fell down a hole. It was a giant rabbit hole. Alice looked down smiling and said, What's down there? Gave me the power to ye stop bullying me. But what is down there also has the power to make sure you will never bully me or anyone else ever again. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper and if you enjoy the content then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. Tony was lying on the operating table after being in a near fatal accident. The doctors were performing an emergency operation on him and they knew that he was dying but they kept trying to save him. God knows enough people died in this hospital lately a doctor said. Tony could hear them speaking. Suddenly he heard one of the nurses say, We have lost all vital signs. He then found himself falling in through a tunnel and he remembered hearing about a dark tunnel and a light people see just before they die. He then was looking down at the operation table from floating above. He wondered was this an out of body experience? Was he dead? He must be if there were no vital signs. Then suddenly he heard a nurse speaking to him. Don't give up. It's not your time to go. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Don't give up whatever you do. Keep fighting. The nurse had a strong Irish accent. She continued to speak. Tony, you have so much more to do in this world. Don't give up. Come back. Don't leave, your time to go is not now. Suddenly Tony wasn't floating over the bed anymore. But he was back in his body and could hear a doctor say, Wow, that was something else. He was almost gone for ten whole minutes. A nurse said, Vital signs are stable. Tony smiled and a few minutes later he was speaking to the nurse. 
but he realised it wasn't the nurse that saved him by asking him to not give up. The nurse said, You gave us all a fright, Tony, but what just happened was nothing short of a miracle. You were dead for ten whole minutes. Tony said, Could I please thank the nurse with the Irish accent, please? She kept telling me don't give up, and that is what made me pull back from crossing over. The doctor said, Tony, there is no one here with an Irish accent. Well, luckily we don't have the nurse with that accent around her anymore. Tony asked, why, what's wrong with her? The nurse said, the only nurse around here with an accent from Ireland was this crazy woman. She murdered 14 of our patients, and when she was found out, she shot herself in the head. Just before she did shoot herself, she started rambling on about she would make sure we all pay for getting her caught. Suddenly the woman froze and the doctors, when the nurse with the accent from Ireland appeared and said, I made my penance after I killed those patients, and I proved it by bringing this patient back to life. But as for the doctors and nurses, who were the reason I was caught experimenting with murder, well that's a different story. Within two minutes, everyone in the room were killed besides Tony. Soon after, the police were called, and Tony was arrested for multiple homicide of the nurses and doctors that were killed by the ghost of the nurse who saved him. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. Debt. That was the odour that occupied the room. The pungent smell of vomit and sweat was evident, but the stench of rotting dead flesh was predominant. David looked fearfully at his mother, lying helpless on the bed. He knew she was sick, but the sight of her disease eaten flesh made him feel an array of emotions. With fear being the front runner, he was scared for his mother. He did not want her to die, but the fear was also for his own well-being. The imminent fear that it could be contagious made him keep his distance. His father sat holding his mother's hand, the bits of the hand that remained that is. The disease had stripped his caregiver of most of the muscle and flesh she had once used to nurture and care for him. All the money and power his father had was of no use against a disease such as this. World-renowned doctors and specialists had been called as soon as his mother had exhibited signs of the sickness, all to no avail. Disease does not discriminate. Janice was suffering just as the poor do, dying with no means of recovery. Necrotizing facets was the name for what ailed his mother. He had heard it on the news a while before he saw it plague his mother, the flesh-eating disease, or if the stories he had heard around school before it closed were anything to go on, the zombie disease was a more applicable diagnosis. The fever and nausea were the first symptoms. Janice was unable to take her son to school, lying weak in her bed with her temperature climbing steadily. David's father, Jonathan, put it down to a bug of sorts and simply picked up the slack by doing the duties around the house his wife was unable to do. By the second week of sickness, Janice was completely unable to move, with her fingers and toes taking on a darkish hue. 
David had continued to go to school and had heard of many of the kids talk about other people suffering from a similar sounding sickness. But in all the stories he had heard, none of them ended well. Fearing for his mother's health, David repeated these stories to his father, only to be met with reassurance and comfort. That reassurance and comfort proved to be meaningless as he now sat looking at the disease, riddled body of his mother, flesh eaten beyond comprehension, holes gaping in places unimaginable. Jonathan had tried his best, by all means, as soon as he saw his wife's condition deteriorate, a number of doctors were called for consultation. They all came to the same prognosis. According to the doctors looking after her, she was one of the first to be stricken by the disease, and just as the others had, her condition had progressed. Their only suggestion was to move her to the hospital wing they had designated to those afflicted with the disease. Before moving her, Jonathan taught to take David to see the hospital where they would care for his mother. They discussed the matter with her and decided to make the trip the next day. You've been avoiding me, baby, Janice said once alone with David. I'm just scared, Mum. I don't want you to die, came David's reply. Laughing, Janice told David. That's not something you need to worry about, my son. What you do need to worry about is how comfy my room there is going to be. Joining in with his mother's laughter, David finally dropped his inhibitions and sat close to his mother, resting his head on her bed. She stroked his head as he fell asleep. He had not slept long at the bedside of his mother, but his dreams were those of zombies and those that hunted. Necrotizing Facetus His father woke him to go to bed, and the disturbance of the dreams was a thorough welcome by David. Walking half asleep towards the door, he could but help glance back at his mother. He could feel the tears well up as the woman lying in the bed closely resembled those creatures that haunted his dream. The drive to the hospital the next day was excruciating. The silence seemed to drill deep into David's core as he sat next to his father. He could feel the sadness and pain emanating from the man he had always viewed as an absolute pillar of strength and wisdom. When the journey had finally ended and they sat in the car park of the hospital, David suddenly burst into tears. The stark reality of the possibility of losing his mother had hit him like a freightliner moving at remarkable speeds. His father hesitated for a second, unsure of what the appropriate response would be, given that he too felt so unable to do anything he wanted to cry to. He held his son, the two embraced tightly and said nothing. No words could have helped either feel better. The dark clouds drifting in the sky outside them closely resembled the way both of them felt inside, cold and lost. The bright lights in the hospital corridor beat down on them. They winched as they walked in, waiting for their eyes to adjust. Good morning, we're here to view and book a room in the CDC wing, please, Jonathan asked. Um, we're sorry to inform you. There has been an incident in the CDC room, sir. We're not accepting any new patients at the moment. What? That's preposterous. What kind of incident? Jonathan shouted at the nurse. Before she could answer, the doors to the CDC wing burst open, and what looked like the remains of a man ran through the doors, leaving footprints of blood behind him.
He lunged at a woman seated on the chairs outside the centre for disease control, and people were too shocked to respond. Pinning her down, Jonathan and David could see the sick man biting and clawing at the woman's face. Blood and flesh flew everywhere. He had more holes in him than flesh. Bits of bone could be seen through the loose hanging hospital gown that covered the eaten man. The disease had all but devoured his body and it was a miracle he was able to move. Does that answer your question sir? The nurse screeched as she made a beeline for the exit. Dragging David Jonathan followed the panicked crowds through the door and towards the car park. The only people left in the hospital were the zombie looking individual and his victim. Well, what was left of her after he had eaten his fill and pulled all her intestines out through the hole he had chewed in her stomach. Rushing to get in the car, David and Jonathan said nothing as they ran and pushed their way through the crowds to get where they were going. Locking themselves in their car, they merely sat where they were, not moving and not saying anything, bursting into tears once again. <laughs> David was the only one to finally break the silence. We have to get home to mom, dad. As they pulled into the driveway, Jonathan had already begun giving David instructions. As soon as we get in, you need to go up to your room and pack a bag. We're going to go straight to the airport and get on a plane to India. Your uncle Kieran mentioned something about doctors working on stuff like this there. We'll take your mother and this will be all sorted out. Come straight to the room when you're packed. Almost as soon as the car was stationary, David leapt out of the car and ran up the driveway and into his house. Jonathan was close behind. As Jonathan made his way into his bedroom, he could hear his son cursing and banging his cupboard doors. He too would pack a bag for him and his wife and they would leave to a safer place. Having finished packing some clothes into a bag, David closed it and ran out of his room. The tears had begun to dry and a smile crept over his face at the thought of three of them flying to India to make mum better. Who knows, maybe Uncle Kieran would be waiting at the airport for them. Bursting through the door of his parents' room, the smile that had recently formed once again dissolved to tears. There would be no trip to the airport, let alone India. Straddling her husband on her bed, David could see his mother. Her head was buried in her husband's chest as she feasted. Jonathan's hand dangled off the bed, drenched in his own blood. The only thing David could hear over his loud breaths was the grotesque sound of his mother chewing and slurping the bits of flesh and blood she was stuffing her face with. Standing there frozen, David saw his mother turn to face him. What now looked him in the eye was not his mother, blood dripping from its chin, dead eyes staring. It stood up, leaving Jonathan lying on the bed with holes chewed in his body. David felt his legs give out. Mom, he said weakly, tears streaming down his cheeks, hoping something inside of the creature would hear and recognize her son and perhaps grant him mercy. The ground seemed to shake as it took a step towards him. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content.
Jane was knitting in her living room. She was very happy knitting, as always, because it always relaxed her and took away a lot of stress if she was feeling stressed. Suddenly she spotted something out of the corner of her eye. There was a woman who seemed to be exhausted resting up against her wall outside. She looked out the window and the woman didn't seem to see her. Jane felt very sorry for the woman and wondered was she in a weakness. So she went outside and asked her would she like to come into her house for a cup of tea. A few minutes later the woman sat down at Jane's table and Jane brought her a cup of tea. The woman said, thanks very much, you did your good deed for the day. She drank her tea, then Jane nearly fainted with shock when the woman took out a gun and pointed it at Jane. The woman said, okay, I know you have lots of money in this house and jewellery, so hand it over or I'm going to shoot you. Suddenly the woman felt kind of dizzy. The gun lowered against her will and then fell to the ground. A few minutes later the woman came around. She must have fell asleep. Jane was standing in front of her smiling. It had then hit her that her tea had been drugged. The woman was tied to a chair and gagged while Jane smiled at her and said, you see, I actually thought you were tired. I thought you were in a weakness and I would have still tortured you. But now that I know you are trying to rob me, well, that brings the torture to another level. Jane took out a drill and smiled, then drilled into the woman's knees as tears were rolling down her cheeks. Thanks for watching the assassin rapper and if you enjoy the content then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. When Sarah was small, she used to always be afraid of the dark. She hated the dark even more now, and she hated her own shadow. It started when she was seven years old. Her and her twin sister were in their room, and they borrowed a horror book from their mom. Sarah was spooking her twin sister Katie out by pretending there was shadows going to get her and they were on the wall. Sarah realized that she could make shadows on the wall and spooked Katie out every time she turned around. Suddenly something fell and Katie got such a fright she backed back and fell off her bunk bed and out the top story window and was killed instantly. 15 years later, Sarah still gets flashbacks every time she sees her own shadow. She went to counselling and everything over it. She knew she had to get rid of her fear. She knew it was awful what happened, but she knew she had to finally put it behind her. She wasn't going to look at her shadow anymore. What Sarah couldn't see as she was walking down the street is her own shadow take out a knife. Suddenly she heard a voice saying, Don't you think you can outrun your shadow? Sarah was certain she had shook off her obsession of her shadow but turned around because she knew that the voice was not in her head. She froze in horror because in all the years she just saw her shadow, not her shadow moving differently than her and definitely not her shadow holding a knife. Suddenly the shadow lunged the knife into her and walked into her. 
then healed instantly and walked down the street. Katie was practicing walking down the street. Hi, my name is Sarah. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. Susie and Jane were twins and living in LA. Susie was very busy with her YouTube channel where she spoke about different wellness tips and makeup tutorials. Jane was checking through her Instagram while Susie was speaking into the camera doing a live stream. She said, Hello guys, welcome to my live stream and today I'm going to be giving ye great wellness tips on how to relax and get a better night's sleep. And having a great night's sleep not only adds to your physical well-being, but your mental well-being also. And I will also be sharing some delicious vegan recipes with ye that are also gluten-free. The live stream took about an hour and afterwards Susie checked her emails and answered as many comments as she could. Susie was really looking forward to sign a new endorsement deal which would bring her in millions. She had a secret idea with her and her partners who were teaming with her. Everything was going great until Jane went missing. Susie explained to her partners that she would continue with her secrets to success idea in a few weeks. But right now she had to concentrate on getting her sister back. Susie spoke into the camera during a live stream. Hi everyone, I have some very sad news for you today. My twin sister Jane has gone missing. If anyone knows anything about her whereabouts, please please contact me or your local police station. The views were going up and up during the stream and news of Jane's disappearance spread like wildfire. Soon it was front page news and on almost every news station. Susie couldn't believe that the team she was partnering with were putting so much pressure on her. When she was all alone in her house, she walked down to her basement and turned the light on. She took the gag off her twin sister and put a gun to her head and said, Okay Susie, you either give me that secret idea you have that you got that million dollar deal or I'm going to shoot you in your head and tell them I have another idea. I am sick and tired of all your stupid videos of you flaunting yourself and acting like you know it all. Now I'm in your place, which proves what I always taught but never told you. I'm just as good as you, and as a matter of fact, I'm much better than you. Suddenly there was a noise at the stairs. Jane turned around. A guy was standing holding a gun and said, You bitch, I knew you were crazy from your videos, and now look at you, holding your own twin sister at gunpoint. The man who was a stalker of Susie from months shot Jane in her head, thinking it was Susie, and untied Susie, thinking it was Jane. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content.